Yo, yo, we back. Like I said, I was going to do, I was going to spin the block. We was going to talk about this Caleb Plant versus David Benavidez. The countdown, the 10 day countdown. This is day five of Plant versus Benavidez, the 10 day countdown. Judah Bing signing in. If you can, please hit that like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You know, we're going to get it popping. But, yo, we're going we gonna to continue to talk more about this Cater Plant versus David Benavidez joint. And um, so let's get into it. So, day five. Day five, we're going to talk about how. No. We're going to talk about why a lot of cats, a.k.a. niggas, is rooting for Plant. All of a sudden, when Plant was fighting Canelo and Uskateki, the love for Plant wasn't this big. So why all of a sudden can a plant is starting to get all this love and attention from Negroes and the Mexican community, which I also, when I say Negro, I'm talking about y'all too. Because <laughs> believe it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, Mexicans, y'all are niggas. And it shows in your everyday life. It shows in your attitude. It shows in your wardrobe. It shows in your demeanor. It shows um, in your speech. I mean, etc. Y'all are niggas. So stop fucking and acting like y'all crackers. I know y'all benefit off being called so-called crackers, but all that shit is over with. You know what I mean? Y'all got to stop faking the funk. Start being realistic. <laughs> but anyway, yo. The only um, one of the main reasons I have one of the main problems I have with this fight is what I just said. Is how all of a sudden Kayla Plant is starting to gain a lot of fans and followers when he fought Canelo, and I'm sure y'all can attest to this too. He was getting a lot of hate mail and a lot of threats and all kind of shit from Canelo fans. Now, those same exact fans are the ones pushing him up to the forefront and dick riding and saying he'll beat David Benavidez. But we know, we already know what's going to happen. This ain't nothing new, it's not nothing different. It's the same song, different setting. You know what I mean? Just like Digital Underground, same song. All around the world, same song. <clears throat> so, yo. David Benavides is going to continue to do what he always does. And that's elite boxing skill cutting off the ring, and deadly body shots. Elite boxing skill, cutting off the ring, and deep, deadly body shots. Now, a lot of people always say, you know, David, ben David Benavidez has never been proven. We ain't never seen him fight nobody that's a top 168 pounder. But when he did fight somebody that was a top 168 pounder, a.k.a. Anthony Durrell, he knocked him out in incredible, fa in incredible fashion. And on top of that, Durrell was a champion and David Benavidez was 19. So, no, he wasn't 19, my bad. Uh, so, now... 
he was David, he was like 20. He was still the youngest. He was like the youngest. He was like one of the youngest champs ever at like 168 to get a title. And he done it in traumatic and great fashion. A ninth round stoppage. This is three years prior to when Caleb Plant got the stoppage. And mind you, Anthony Durrell was still 35 years old when he fought Benavidez. And he was 38 years old coming off that plant loss. So three years takes a large toll on your body in the sport of boxing. And on top of that, not to mention, this man was already 35 years old when he took that beating to Benavidez in 2019. So all that plays a, t plays a part. You know what I mean? Even though Benavidez did, I mean, uh, Anthony Durrell did get a couple stoppages and KOs after he fought Benavidez. But to any top competition, he, will, he was never the same after Benavidez. He was never the same. And it showed when he got back in the ring with Plant. But I want to say this too, y'all. Because a lot of cats are always saying David Benavidez is too slow. He, they say they always say he don't have footwork. And you know, they they notice they always say the same things that they hear other motherfuckers say. The same people that they watch on YouTube, they check their videos out and then they come back and regurgitate all the same bullshit that they say. They just flip it around and try to make it seem like it's some new shit. No, you're not fooling me. You're not fooling TWT. We know your schemes. We know the games you play. That shit will not rock over here. You won't get no cool points saying that bullshit. So, what I've noticed from a lot of cats is they always saying how David Benavidez will be too slow. His footwork won't be up to par. He won't be doing this and that, et cetera, et cetera. But my thing is this. You know the reason why we never, ever seen David Benavidez 100% in the ring and you utilize and use all his tools? It's because we never heard it to. He never had to show all his skills and tools because nobody ever made him bring it out of him to do that. He never had to do all that shit. But we seen the best Caleb Plant and he lost to Canelo. I don't give a damn what all y'all niggas say. We seen the best Caleb Plant at his greatest and he failed. He struggled tremendously and lost on the biggest stage in boxing history. And y'all niggas want to sit up here and say he's going to capitalize and be better against a man who is bigger, stronger, and has a lot more punch accuracy than him and anybody else at 160 fucking eight. Are you fucking serious? Are y'all serious? But you are. Y'all serious. But you and but you know what's funny? It's obvious hate. It's pure obvious hate. <laughs> but see, this is why I love the sport of boxing. Because this is the only sport in life where if two people don't like each other, they can hash it out for money and bragging rights and for the fame and glory. You can't do that nowhere else. Hockey is the only sport outside of boxing that they will allow you to duke it out as men. That's why I low-key F with hockey, too. I always did. But we sticking to the topic. The topic right now is boxing, and we're talking about Benavidez and Caleb Plant, who, this is not my opinion, what I know is going to happen is Benavidez is going to come and lay this man flat the fuck out. 
And all you cats in here can get mad. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Because y'all can come up here and y'all can state your predictions. Y'all can state your predictions and swear up and down as facts. But the minute somebody else come and give they uh they 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 do their research and they give they objections on the matter and tell other people why they feel shit will go a different way and know it. It fucks with them because deep down they know what they doing is bullshit and it's unrealistic. See, that's that fan mail fanboy shit that they be doing. It's too much favoritism in right now today in the sport of boxing. Everybody got their favorites and they uh, first picks and everything and they want to stick to it. And it's like no matter what they favorite or first picks do, they rock with it. That's gay. That's female shit. We're not doing that over here. We're not doing that. We calling all this shit out, whether it's your favorite or not. <laughs> be realistic. Don't be on no weak female petty shit and allowing your favorite boxes are, you know what I mean, your top picks to say and do all this goofy shit and they get justified. We're not doing that. No, sir. And what I was talking about this morning is notice closer and closer as the fight gets, as close as we get to March 25th, Notice Kayla Plant has been doing a lot more trolling than usual. Do you know what? To be honest, y'all, I haven't. I've only seen about three or four videos of Kayla Plant training in the gym, like putting in hardcore heavy work. What I've noticed is that most of the footage of Kayla Plant working out it's the same old footage that's being looped around and recycled. All I see from Kayla Plant has been trolling. All I've been seeing is Twitter fingers, Instagram, you name it. Anything with a keyboard, that's what Kayla Plant fingers are. When his fingers should be in somebody's hand wraps and in somebody's gloves in the gym training. But instead, he's doing a lot more trolling than training. That's another, in, that's another indication of somebody, like I said this morning, who's spooked and their mind is not on the big prize as it should be, which is David Benavidez and trying to secure this belt and this victory. His mind is not where it's supposed to be. In other words, Kayla Plant's mind is on something totally different because deep down, Caleb Plant know and his two dollar fucking fans know that he is not coming out victorious in this bout so he has to do and say and come up with whatever wild scheme he can to throw team Benavidez and everybody who support Benavidez off it's not working it never will <laughs> David Benavidez has still been the same man he always has he's poised He's focused. This is the most elusive I've seen David Benavidez in the gym. I mean, the defense I have seen this man. Yo. It's like South for Plant, son. This is going to be a massacre. It's going to be a massacre. 50 Cent album. You know what I mean? It's going to be a total massacre. I call David Benavidez El Nino. This nigga is about to bring unbearable heat to Kayla Plant. He about to overheat Kayla Plant and kill Kayla Plant's roots. <laughs> so you know whenever whenever the root dies, the body dies. He gonna kill he gonna overheat Kayla Plant and he gonna kill him from the roots. He gonna burn the roots off and from the roots from the bottom up, the entire planet is going to disintegrate and evaporate. <laughs> Word up. Yeah. And a lot of you, Kato, a lot of you Kato plant fans is spooked. Y'all scared too, because deep down, y'all know this man cannot F with David Benavidez. It's just favoritism and it's fanboyism. It's gayism. 
It's homosexualism. <laughs> it's weirdism. All the isms you can think of. Yeah, you know I mean, but that's Negro here or there. Anyway, so day five, day cinco. Um, the topic is: Will the WWF size ring help Caleb Plant in his advantage on securing his victory? And my thoughts on that is, I don't think so. The bigger the ring, the more advantage David Benavidez has. And see, and this is what I don't think you cats understand. I don't think you cats, and you know what? I'm starting to realize now before I'm, before I'm about to say what I'm getting ready to say. A lot of you niggas don't even watch Benavidez highlights. A lot of you cats don't even know the things that this man has done in or outside the ring to even determine if he's going to win this fight. And something, I got a clear indication of that yesterday. And I'm explaining. So I was online and I was on YouTube and I was searching. I was looking at David Benavidez and Kato Plan predictions. I came across one video of a young cat. Um, I ain't gonna say no names, but he was a young cat, obviously. And upon watching his video, I noticed something. And you know what? From what he said, I know this is everybody else as well. Midway through the video, he was doing an analysis video from an interview that David Benavidez recently done about three days ago when he was in the gym. And it was, uh, it was the sadistic hurt he said he was going to put on plant. He was doing an analysis to that video. One thing he said stuck with me. And what he said made me realize that this was not only him, but everybody who say they got Kayla Plant winning this fight. Midway through the video, when he saw and heard Benavidez talking that shit and saying how much he was going to put the pressure on this man and smother him and suffocate him and beat his ass till he can't take no more. When he started hearing that and started noticing how David Benavidez was talking that shit and he wasn't backing down, he was standing on what he was saying truthfully as a man should, his spirit got shook. His spirit got shook up. And he said something that stuck with me. He said, he paused the video and he admitted and he said, quote, unquote, you know what? I haven't even really watched Benavidez to see. I'm going to have to go back and check out some film and boxing highlights from his previous fights and see what he about because he talking like he about to punish this man. And that's my fucking problem with you niggas. You get up here and you talk all this shit and you protect the most Bitches behavior from your most favorite fighters. You justify that shit with everything you believe in. Without even going back and doing research and checking out the man he's about to face. Niggas, you are your own worst fucking problem. You are the only motherfuckers I know on this planet. Who will justify a situation and ride with a situation. Before even doing your fucking just do. Before even doing your research and checking it out for yourself and seeing, testing the waters and seeing what the temperature is like. You niggas are the only niggas that do that on the face of this earth. And I don't know why you niggas ain't learning from that. You keep fucking failing. Because y'all niggas don't listen. Y'all niggas got your dick and your heart in the wrong fucking place. 
You got your emotions in this shit. It's not about emotion. It's facts. This shit is not emotion. But yet, and still, you get it confused. And you put your emotions in it. No. It's not emotional. It's factual. And at the end of the day, all the time, facts over emotion. Facts trumps emotion. Emotionalism, that's bitch shit. That's female shit. That's female behavior. A lot of you niggas got female tendencies, yo. And it will never change. Like, it's 2023. And I've noticed the further and further away we get into the future, the further and further men get away from testosterone and masculinity. It's disgusting. Like, don't none of y'all have y'all own mindset. Everybody, everybody follows somebody's pattern. And it's the same fucking wave over and over and over again. It's the same thing in society. Everybody is following somebody and they create the same fucking problem over and over and over again. This is why I'm who I am and I will stay who I am. This is why I'm so fucking rock solid. None of that extra emotional shit I don't deal with none of that. It's not about that. The difference between me and a lot of those other cats who do predictions, I look at it from the facts. The fact is, one, don't none of these boxing niggas know who the fuck I am from a can of paint. So regardless of what I say about them or critique them, that shit is not going to help me. No way. In hell, no matter what the fuck they got going on. Two, I'm not getting paid to do this shit on a regular basis. I'm not a certified journalist. I don't get paid to talk about this shit. This shit is off the strength of me loving boxing. <laughs> Three, don't forget from what I just said with one and two. And that's it. <laughs> Like straight up, motherfuckers, they y'all got your emotions in this shit, and it's not about that. You think you think boxing give a fuck about y'all emotions? If they did, a lot of the fights that y'all claim y'all want and y'all claw for, they do the exact opposite and give y'all bullshit. You feel me? Like so. With me, it's not about emotion, son. It's strictly, strictly facts, and it's boxing. The sweet science, skills. Sometimes it's not even skills. Sometimes it's your boxing IQ. Boxing IQ trumps skills because you can be in a ring with the, with the most highly skilled individual, and you can outsmart him. You can out-time him. You can outwork him. If you have a boxing IQ. But none of you niggas will, under, will never understand that. Because why? You niggas follow another man. You follow anybody who you think is saying the same thing that you are saying. You follow anybody who's rocking and biasly cheering for the nigga who you've been cheering for for years. A lot of you niggas pick favorites. It's too much favoritism going on. All that shit has to stop. Now. With that being said, a clear example, Shakur Stevenson, last night, we all know what happened. We seen the, uh, the tweets and the, 
we've seen the tweets and shit online from Shakur, Shakur, Keyshawn, and Frank, and all them cats. What was Shakur? What was Shakur Stevenson saying? I want all the smoke. I'm ready. That's what we here for. I want all the smoke. But then Keyshawn get on there and say, "Let me fuck him up, please." And what does Shakur say? Nah, I'm just letting him know I'm like that. You can have him. Fuck that. You was just saying you can take the nigga. Now, all of a sudden, you want the big fish and you was just letting him know you like that? Nigga, if you was like that, sign the fucking contract. Stop talking too much. And that's what I'm saying. Y'all niggas talk too much. Y'all act like bitches, man. Y'all talk too much. Somebody, somebody needs y'all phone. Y'all niggas don't need to go on social media talking this shit because y'all look dumb. And it make y'all look soft and it make y'all look weak. Shakur, n don't go online doing that shit no more. Because to me, what it look like is clout chasing. That looks like 100% pure clout chasing. Y'all niggas is clout chasing. And you're not gangsters. You're boxers. Stick to what the fuck you know. You're not thugs. You're not hoodlums. You're boxers. So with that being said, I'm going to end it on that note. Um, pay the plant. A lot of your behavior is weird as fuck lately. And I know why. It's because the closer and closer we get to March 25th, you know that one, you're either unprepared, two, you didn't work hard enough, three, you hoping your nutrition, your nutritionalists. <laughs> You hoping your nutritionalist and your strength and conditioning coach and your chef is going to help you balance your way out of this. And that's a fucking joke. Another thing. Yo, you got all this time for Twitter, my G. You got all the time in the world for Twitter, Instagram, anything in the metaverse you got time for. But when it came time for you to speak your shit and talk your shit to David Benavidez at that press conference, you froze up. You shook the fuck up. And let's stop playing and let's call the shit out for what it is. Taylor Plant got shook the fuck up. All y'all can sit up here and say, oh, he and David Benavidez, hey, he being sarcastic. Get the fuck out of here. I'm sarcastic. I know what sarcasm looked like. And that shit, what Caleb Plant was doing at the press conference, that was not fucking sarcasm. That was not sarcasm. That nigga was shook. Because ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. You scared to death. You scared to look. You shook. Cause ain't no such thing as halfway crooks scared to death. You scared to look. You shook. Nigga. It ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Either you in it all the way or you not. And that goes to all you boxing niggas who think y'all gangsters. It ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. David Benavidez ain't no gangster. He never claimed to be. He's a fucking boxer. And anybody who talks that shit to him in boxing, best believe he going to speak on that shit and he going to set it correct. That's what any man would do. But see, a lot of y'all niggas ain't men. So y'all wouldn't understand that. So on top of that, we out of here. Shalom. Peace. I'm out.